Hi guys, it's Ouch 110. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Yeah. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys wait for this video. I've already had a couple of messages and questions saying, when are you going to do it? So it's here. Um, what was I going to say? So yesterday, the Prime Minister of the UK announced that London and the South East has now been pushed into Tier 4, which, if you don't know what that means in other countries, we are in our third lockdown now, um, full lockdown. So I'm just hoping that this video is going to bring a little bit of joy to someone at least. So this is my end of year traditional video that I do every single year, and it's what I added to my collection. So without further ado, I'm just going to start. I added a about 40 things, I think. A chunk of them are all from the same house. But, um, yeah, when, the, when they're all together on the floor, as a perfumista, I'm like, it doesn't look that much, but I think that's, your view just gets skewed when you collect fragrances. <laughs> it is a lot, it is quite a lot. So I'm just gonna start. I hope you guys are having a lovely day. So let's begin. So the first fragrance in the video is gonna be this one and I actually got this immediately after I did my last year end of year video and it happens every year I'm guessing tomorrow I'll get something because there's two things that aren't in this video because they're taking forever to come so it's Amarosa and it's by Ruth Marstenbrook I'm obsessed with her perfumes I've talked about them quite a bit I've actually not reviewed any of them though which is really strange i'm not quite sure why to be honest but this is a really beautiful one it's it smells to me like pantene conditioner it's very clean uh i'm not even really sure what's in that i think it's a tuberose one with maybe some mandarin i'm not sure but it's very soapy very clean very strong and she just changed her packaging which i don't like the new packaging i'm not gonna lie i like this packaging but i still want to get 100 mil of this because um I just want a bigger one of it. It's one of those ones that I want a backup of. So, Amarosa by Ruth Marstenbrook, a really cool perfumer from the UK. Uh, I think all of her perfumes are great, but this one and her fragrance called Signature are my two favourites. So, the next one, oh my gosh, really happy to receive this one. And it's this beautiful little thing. It's B by Zoologist. This has become probably my top five it in my top five zoologist perfumes let me just do this comes in this really cool limited edition box uh with the little beehive thing that goes over the top i love that and that's so cool but yeah it's b by zoologist um just a really fantastic perfume this one it's very very strong it is centered around kind of a mimosa and to me the opening smells a bit like Werther's Originals, it's got a little bit of a cinder toffee thing going on, honeycomb, beeswax, there is a, what's it called now, royal jelly accord in it as well, but the big surprise of this one is that it has a huge incense background and when it dries it almost goes smoky and it's really powerful, so this is one of the newer releases from Zoologist and it really does last a long time. And I absolutely love it. Top five for sure. So that's the beautiful little bee. The next one is by a brand called Fedon Paris. And this perfume is called Rouge Avignon. If you know the brand, their f most famous perfume is probably uh, Tabac Rouge. A lot of people know that one. It's kind of compared to Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille a, li a lot. Except it's a bit spicier. But this is my favourite one from the brand. It's... This one gets compared to, this is going to make them sound like a dupe brand, but they're not. This one gets compared to Black Orchid quite a lot because it shares some notes, but I don't actually think it smells that similar. It is a sandalwood perfume essentially, but it's got um, an earthy note, it's got raspberry, it's got rose, it's very unique. I really, really like this and I haven't worn it much, as you can see, but uh, it's the only fragrance I own by this brand. and. I love it. It's a little bit dirty, but it's a bit fruity as well. It's it's interesting. I can see why it gets compared to Tom Ford, but Tom Ford's way more dense. Um, it's just because it shares raspberry, and I think it's got a cocoa in it as well. So there's about four or five notes that it shares with Black Orchid, but it's kind of different. So the next one is this one. Um, it's Amouage Epic Woman. 
so many times, you know, when you smell a fragrance on another person, I had a sample of this and I actually gave it to my friend and we went out one day gallivanting and she actually wore it and it wasn't until I, I mean, I liked it anyway, but when I smelled it on her, that's when I thought, okay, it smells great on. I need to get it now for myself. So um, I did, I eventually got it and I, I'm a fan of Amouage. I've got, I think six of their fragrances now. This one's really interesting. It's got a lot of caraway seeds in it. That's the main thing I smell. So it's got this kind of, caraway to me is almost a little bit minty and dry. And this has got a lot of that going on. Of course, it's Amouage, so there's a lot of incense in it. Um, there's multiple notes, but it's, it's very, it smells Middle Eastern without being typical, and that's why I like it. So it's like a cold green fragrance with a bunch of incense. And I haven't, I think I've smelled the men's one, I'm not sure, but yeah, I absolutely love this. I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm a huge fan of Amouage. So that's the most recent Amouage that I got. I'm not sure what the next one's gonna be. I really, really want to review the new four ones, Crimson Rocks and Meander and all of those, but I don't know, the time will have to come, I suppose. So the next whole bunch, there's a lot of them. This is probably the main bulk of the collection, is they're all from Lush. So Lush fans, this might be a treat for you. So the first one is Snow Cake. I got this because they released this ages ago when I actually worked for the company and then they took it away again, but they brought it back. So it was available online, so I got it. This one is a spicy, almondy marzipan sweet kind of smell. I really enjoy wearing it. I'll go through these ones a little bit quickly because Lush fragrances aren't that complicated. The next one I got was Sultana of Soap. This is my favorite soap that Lush sell actually. It used to be Miranda, but they they took that away because Lush love taking things away when you, when you fall in love with them. So this one's a really cool fruity one. Um, it's very difficult to describe. I, it's why I haven't reviewed it because I really just can't find the words. It's essentially a little bit, I guess, raisiny, sultanery, but it's, it's a bit clean as well. It's a tough one, it's a tough one. But anyway, Sultana of Soap, which if you've smelled the soap, you will know what that smells like. The next one I had in a 30 mil, but I got myself 100 mil of it because I really like it. And it's American Cream. This is another, I guess, popular scent that Lush do. They've, they've made multiple products with this scent. It's a fluffy, vanilla type smell, but it's not usual. I think there's benzoin in it as well. It's not a typical vanilla. It's a, quite a comforting fragrance. Um, yeah, I, I kind of wear this one to bed, but I like anything scented with American cream. I have multiple products with it. A shower foam, the conditioner, the shower gel, everything. So sometimes I just get lost in a whole bunch of <laughs> American cream when I want to. So I love that one. The next ones were all of the Florence exclusives, um, which they have taken away again. Um, I don't really know what Lush do sometimes. Their decisions, they just, they're kind of all over the place sometimes. So I got all of them. One of my favorites is Sappho. I was gonna review this actually as well. This is one of the best Lush perfumes I think that they've made. It's wasn't made by the usual perfumers of the brand, it's made by a different lady, all of these Florence ones were. This is a, a kind of smoky, leathery iris perfume. Little wisps of incense smoke I get from it. It feels very vintage, it's a little bit animalic, and they've never really done that route before, as far as I know. So it's named after, I think it's a Greek god or somebody in Greek poetry, something like that. When I read it, I knew, but right now I can't remember. So that's Sappho, I love it. The next two from that collection were my least favorites and I actually gave them to my partner, which is why they are pretty much empty. <laughs> One of them is called Fresh As. Uh, it's meant to smell kind of like pine, but to me it smells like coriander seeds, uh, which is why I didn't really like it. But when my partner wears it, I actually really like it. So it was a little regret giving it away, but yeah, that's nearly gone. So that's another Florence exclusive. The other one is Nero, which is about Neroli. So this is a really clean, 
punchy neroli fragrance. Let me just smell it. This one's actually nicer than fresh as, I think, and I love neroli, but it, it's a lush neroli. And if you know their perfumes, it has a very definite lush feel. The other one, there's two left in the Florence exclusives, is Frangipani. And this one I kept for myself because I went to a, let the, focus, the camera just focus, I went to um, a Lush spa treatment which was amazing and they pair you with one of these Florence exclusives and Frangipani was the one that I got paired with so it reminds me of my spa treatment so it's special. It's almondy a little bit, it's obviously a, a tropical white floral as well, it's soft, it's a fluffy one, um, I really like it. It's quite a cool one. And the last one is my second favourite after Sapphire, I think. And it's Confetti. This is a really interesting fragrance. It's... Um, confetti is all about Italian weddings. And Confetti is the almond, the sugared almonds that you get at weddings. So it's got a bit of almond in it, but it's very unusual. It's got a lot of violet leaf, it's got a rose in there, and it's got coffee as well. So I've used quite a bit of that considering. Um, this is fantastic. I love this one, and I hope they kind of bring it back. So Sappho and Confetti are definitely my two favourites from the line. So let's move on. <laughs> Couple more lush ones, guys. Bear with me. So I also got this... I guess the signature scent of Lush, which is Karma. If you know Lush, you know this fragrance. It's, it's to me the smell of Lush, not of the shop, but it's when you when I think Lush, I think of this. It's a hippy dippy orange patchouli pine fragrance that is unmistakable once you've smelled it. It's very strong, kind of too strong sometimes, but I don't really care. So I got myself that one, and because I like it so much, I got myself. Uh, back up. I got the big one as well. It's really cheap. I think it's about £40 for the 100ml, so it's a bargain if you can handle this fragrance, but not. it's not for everyone, I will say that. So it's, uh, it's quite an intense one. The other one I had a 30ml of, and I really love it, so I got a 100ml one of it, and it's Love. I actually have the body spray of this as well. This is so cool. It's a spiced apple scent it's another one that's really really intense when i wear the body spray and this i'm pretty much a perfume bomb um, it doesn't bother me at all it probably bothers other people but sorry about it so yeah love i love love it's a really really good one it's it's actually from their be never too busy to be beautiful range i guess it used to be available in when they had their sister shop but they brought it over to lush the next one is there's only two left, don't worry. The next one is called Two More Hearts. This one is a floral again. Uh, let me smell it. It's, this is another one from Be Never, from the same as Love. And this one's kind of fluffy, sweet, rosy perfume. I think there's a little bit of violet in it as well, but mainly to me it's about a soft, fluttery rose. Uh, it's very comforting, very simple. It's another one that I wear to bed. And the last one is actually my favourite Lush perfume ever. So I had a 30ml and I got myself a 100ml backup. And I just found out that it's disappeared from their website. So once again, let me just turn the camera. Once again, Lush have taken away something that I love. So it's called 1000 Kisses Deep. This is my favourite Lush perfume ever, like I said. So I got the 100ml one of it, and I'm glad I did, because about a week or so after I got it, it vanished. Such a shame. This is, um, it's an oriental, essentially. It's a mandarin fragrance with uh, some resins. I think it's myrrh, actually, in this one. And I'm discovering that mandarin is a little bit of a magical note. There's a couple of things that I'm, I fall in love with and all of them contain mandarin and it, I call it mandarin magic. Let's just, I'm going to be honest. It's, there's something magical about mandarin because it's, it's the cuter citrus, isn't it? It's sweeter, it's smoother, it's not as bracing as all of the others. And it does something to perfume that apparently I really like. There's the other one by Ruth Marstenbrook. There was one I smelled recently, I think, by Parfums de Nicolai, Parfums Nicolai, and one other. And I'm, I looked at them all and I thought, 
God, it's all Mandarin. Anyway, so that's Thousand Kisses Deep. I love that. So that's a very lushy thing going on with all of those. Let's just have a little shuffle around. So on with the collection, moving away from Lush. The next one I got is an absolutely fantastic perfume. And I was sent this by the owner of the brand because I basically begged. <laughs> and it's called Mandadari and it's by Prin. Uh, if you don't know Prin, he's becoming quite famous, I think, in the perfume world. He's made three for Zoologist now. His first one was Cigar Rum, or one of his more famous ones was Cigar Rum. It won, or it, it was a finalist in the Art and Olfaction Awards. But this Mandadari is unbelievable. If you like Orientals with a twist, this one is... I describe it as being, it's kind of like a cross between Opium by Yves Saint Laurent and Youth Dew by Estee Lauder. But there's animalics in it, there's coffee in it as well. It's so rich and complex. Oh, when Prin does vintage, he really does vintage very, very well. So Mandadari is absolutely beautiful. It's an extra and it's a tiny little 30 mil, but it packs a huge punch. So, so glad to have that one in my collection, and thank you, Prin. I need to review this one. The next one, I did say that there was, uh, the Lushes were ended, but these are in order of when I got them. So after all of that, <laughs> I got a very special Lush perfume that nobody else has, because it was made for me, and it's called Milky Bath. Milky Bath is my favorite uh, bubble bath from Lush, and a lovely friend of mine, managed to get me the perfume made. If you can see it, it says made for Thomas O'Brien on there. Pretty special, huh? I love this. Uh, they just released a Christmas bath bomb with it. It's called Jingle All The Way, I think, or something like that. It's got a bow on it. Uh, it's a creamy, kind of reminds me of something that Chanel might make. I know that sounds very strange considering, but I love the smell of this. And the perfumer that made this has made it in super potent form. This filled a train carriage when the first time I wore it and people, I heard people commenting <laughs> when I wore it and I was very aware. Um, but yeah, if you're familiar with Lush, it's the same as their uh, Milky Bath bubble bath, but they've done a soap before as well. So that is super, super cool. Very, very happy. The next one comes in this weird felt packaging and this is called Everlasting and it's by a brand from New York called The Zoo. I talked about their tuberose one actually and I've done a spotlight on this brand if you're interesting. Uh, interesting? If you're interesting. <laughs> if you're interested. This one um, I absolutely love. They sent me it after I did my spotlight because I gushed about it a little bit in the spotlight. This is really cool. It's a super raw uh, labdanum actually and labdanum is one of my favourite notes which is why I love this. It really feels like they just took the resin from the plant and put it in a perfume. It's got all of the darkness, all of the leatheriness, all of the ambery smokiness that labdanum gives you. And the dry down is amazing. At first it feels a bit dark and scary, but when you wear it, oh my gosh, the dry down has a clean streak. I'm just obsessed with this perfume. I think I'm gonna wear this maybe tomorrow now that I now that I think about it. But yeah, Everlasting by the, by the Zoo is a super cool one. They're a really interesting brand actually. They've got a, quite a few that I find really interesting. Their tuberose is unbelievable. It's the most realistic tuberose I think I've ever smelled. The next one was a gift from the brand. I did a spotlight on this wonderful English brand called Papillon Artisan. Uh, and the owner, Liz, again, because I gushed about this one so much, she offered to send me it. I've reviewed it as well. This perfume, if you know, you know <laughs> how good it is. It's, um, so this is an amber perfume. It's an amber perfume that doesn't feel like many amber perfumes. Is this gonna focus for me today or no? Oh, there you go, Bengal Rouge. So this is an amber perfume, but it doesn't have the typical patchouli vanilla labdanum combination. This actually, the amber accord in here comes from sandalwood, tonka beans, and I think it might be myrrh. And my battery ran out, typical. So yeah, as I was saying, this is a huge focus on tonka, this one. So if you really like tonka beans, 
oh, you will probably like this. There's a little bit of spice as well. There's cinnamon. There's a very gentle animalic in this one. Uh, if you like Shalimar as well, it's it's kind of in that realm, but it's it's much richer than Shalimar and less powdery. It's more resinous and it's sweeter and it's an incredible perfume. I mean, all of her perfumes are great. I've said that before. She's got loads of very, very cool, touching on vintage style. Uh, they're just great. There's, there's a really dirty uh, jasmine one that I love called uh, Salome. But yeah, so the next one, I actually turned 40 this year, which was much to my surprise. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, I just tried to ignore it. But I received a wonderful gift from a very good friend of mine, Abdullah. Uh, a total surprise. I did not know that this was coming. And yeah, I was kind of blown away and very touched that he sent me this because I had been lusting after this perfume for probably two years, I think maybe even more actually. So the fact that it's now in my collection is just amazing. It's something I really treasure. I put it in my most treasured video because I do treasure it so much. It's currently not on display because I use it more in warmer weather, but oh uh, yeah, Ylang 49. I always have the most trouble describing this fragrance. <laughs> And that's a good thing for me because sometimes I don't like to pick things apart. I like to just wear it for what it is and enjoy it, but it's not a ylang ylang. That's, that's the main thing I can tell you. It's more about, there are some, there are some kind of tones of ylang ylang, I guess, but it's not the main feel of it. It's a little bit soapy, it's a little bit clean, it's multiple flowers going on. And yeah, I'm just, I'm not gonna try and describe it because I don't want to ruin it or think about it too much. I just love this for what it is and I don't want it to change in my brain. So Ylang 49 is unbelievable. It's my favourite Lilabo fragrance by far. So I'm so glad to have it. The next unusual beauty in this video is going to be Neanderthal Light. I was sent this uh, by the brand. They asked me if I would review it. I said yes because I'd previously tried it actually and really liked it. It's these guys are a really edgy brand. They it's owned by a Japanese guy called Kentaro, who is a sculptor. And when you see this bottle, gosh, I can smell it just from opening the box. When you see this bottle, you will see what I mean. And look at this. <laughs> so this is about ancient tools that Neanderthals used. It's a very abstract perfume and I really like it. I wore this when it was really hot and it worked so well, gosh. So it's essentially kind of metallic. It's got this steel, aluminium-y type smell to it, but it's also a rose and there's greenery as well. There's galbanum in this one. Um, it's a little bit cold and sharp and but there's a beauty to it as well that's quite hard to pinpoint i have reviewed this as well so if you want to go and see a bit more about it but yeah they have neanderthal light and they have neanderthal dark and this is the one that i really like so this is the one i asked for they've just actually released two new ones as well so i hope i get to try them at some point they're, it's called they're called us and them so i'm intrigued to see what they're going to do next but yeah this is really cool the perfumer is ewan mccall and he is the owner of Joram Studios in Scotland. So yeah, he's pretty cool. So that's Neanderthal Light. The next two I have gushed about enough already, but I'm gonna gush about them again because I've wanted to talk about this brand for a long time. It's DL Roland, a super cool brand from Berlin. I'll be doing a spotlight on them very soon. Uh, I smelled them a year ago and fell in love with them. I've recently done a couple of reviews, so um, David sent me these and I was over the moon because I couldn't wait to tell you guys about them. They are just awesome. I'm going to do a spotlight on the other, the other ones in the line. There's five, um, but I've got these two in bottle form and these two are my favourite. Broken Bouquet and Flower Boy. Go and see my reviews if you want to. <laughs> Broken Bouquet is David's rose. It's um, a kind of figgy aldehyde rose with some gourmand notes and a little bit of oud. That one is really interesting, really powdery. And Flower Boy is really edgy. It's a green, um, oh God, it's really tough to describe. It's, it's ultimately green. 
and leathery as well. It's like a leather green, a suede leather green perfume. Very unique, both of these perfumes. I mean, all of his fragrances are unique, so I'll be talking about them very soon. The rest of them, I should say. The next two were sent to me by my perfume fairy godmother, Margie. She really knows how to make me happy. <laughs> we uh, send each other things uh, some of the time. So she sent me the amazing T-Rex. She was, it was just a little bit unloved in her collection. So she asked me if I wanted it and I happily agreed because I won't bore you with the story, but I had T-Rex when it came out and then I kind of didn't and now I've got it again. So I'm super happy to have this back. It's mental. This perfume is just absolutely insane. It's a big, um, what, what's in there? It's got a lot of Cade, Cade oil, which is a medicinal smoky note, tons of patchouli, there's champaca, there's white florals, other white florals, there's pepper. Um, it's about extinction, so it's just, it's a bit chaotic, and it's made by Antonio Gardoni, who is known for making quite chaotic perfumes. And T-Rex, I love. You have to use it sparingly, because it, it's a room filler, and it's monstrous. As you can imagine, I mean, it's called Tyrannosaurus Rex. So, I'm happy to have this back in my collection. I, I'm so happy, I should say. So, Margie, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I love you. And I'm sending you a parcel. The other one she sent me is Paris 1948 by 4160 Tuesdays. I've tried this once, uh, given I haven't worn this one that many times. I'm not sure if it's a new one or not. But to me, it smells, uh, it's, a, it's a sheep rut, essentially. It's a little bit peachy. Um, it's kind of dry. It's a little bit vintage smelling. Uh, 4160 Tuesdays have got a lot of perfumes. They're an English brand, if you don't know already, and the owner of them, Sarah McCartney, she is kind of quirky. Her perfume names are quite quirky. This one, not so much. I mean, it's called Paris 1948. But she's got some really funny ones, like Tarte's Knicker Drawer, and, oh gosh, I can't remember, Dough in the Snow, and she's even got one called The Greatest scent in the world in my honest opinion <laughs> but yeah that's Paris uh, 1948 and that was sent to me by my lovely perfume fairy godmother Margie so thank you we're coming towards the end the next one isn't a bottle but I'm gonna show you it anyway because it's absolutely gorgeous uh, and this was sent to me by Victor Wong from Zoologist who you guys know by now are my favorite brand you know I talk about them all the time and I just noticed that it says natural selection set on the side <laughs> I didn't know that was even there I've had this for about two weeks <laughs> but he sent me travel sprays of uh, all of the new releases that have come out so I'm actually wearing snowy owl today it's going to be my next review that I do so look out for that one he also sent me moth because he knows it's my favorite uh, so it's got rhinoceros musk deer dodo and snowy owl which are all new releases from the brand and this is just beautiful, oh my gosh. It's like a book and I'm just obsessed with it. I won't put this in the video because it's gonna take up <laughs> all of the space. So the next one was a cheapie that I have re-added to my collection. It's a, such a cheap one. It's a little bit of an eye roller. People might be saying, what the hell? But I actually think it's great and it's called Shh. And it's by a now, uh, unfortunately passed away celebrity that we we used to have over here in the UK who was very controversial she made headlines every week because of her outrageous personality and she did some not cool things I'm not gonna lie but I bought this because I think the perfume is great it's an oriental and it's very cheap I think I paid 10 pounds and it came with a hundred mil shower gel 100 mil perfume shower gel body cream and a 20 mil travel spray. <laughs> so, and when it comes to cheap, this one is very cheap. It's a big oriental floral, this one. There's a bit of vanilla, it's a lot of rose, but there's, I think there's about six or seven flowers in this one, and I really like it as just a, when you wanna lavish yourself with something and do that whole action of spraying and not worrying that it's a super expensive perfume. So, Shush by Jade Goody is that one. So the next one I got is actually a backup. Uh, it's something that I have already, but somebody in my group, Carol Smith, by the way, if you're watching this, hello, she was selling this for really cheap, so I got it. I was just surprised that nobody had bought it before me, actually. <laughs> I don't know why 
it wasn't snapped up. So I decided to snap it up and buy it because I think it's amazing. And sometimes you see it on eBay for really outrageous prices. So it's L'Agent by Argent Provocateur. It's a really cool incense perfume. It's got a lot of myrrh in it. There's some powdery florals. And the camera's gone very dark randomly for some reason. I don't know why. It's a bit leathery as well. It's, it's really cool and it's, it lasts a long time on me and it was a steal, so I got it. So I've got a backup now. So we're coming to the end. The next little bunch was sent to me by a lovely lady called Laura who is a subscriber of mine and she said, she messaged me and said that she normally sends her, when she's decluttering, she sends her perfumes to her friends in Italy. But because we can't travel at the moment, she said, I, I thought I'd send them to you. And she sent me a whole box of things, chocolate, soaps. Um, but she sent me some really cool things. She first of all sent me this um, gift set, this Nikolai gift set, which I haven't tried many of their fragrances. So I was really excited to get this. I need to try them out actually. Uh, there's one that I tried that she asked me to try first, which was the amber one. And I thought it was lovely. So. I might do a mini spotlight on them, I'm not sure. She also sent me two Miller Harris perfumes. This one's called Lost in the City. And this one is a fruity, punchy, uh, rhubarb, kind of fresh, soapy kind of smell. It's very youthful and bright and easygoing. I've never tried that before, so thank you, Laura, so much. So yeah, that's Lost in the City by Miller Harris. If you don't know Miller Harris, they're a, an English brand. Kind of classical, they kind of English, but they make their perfumes in a French style, if that makes sense. The other one she sent me was this that I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation of, which is Poirier d'un Soir. Hope I did that justice. And this one I like a whole lot more, actually. It's a, it is a pear, but it's got a kind of dusky, woody background. It's really fun, actually. It's really hard to not blind you with the light. Sorry, guys. So that's Pirate and Soir. It's, yeah, it's another clean, easy-going fragrance. I have smelled some slightly more edgy ones from that brand. This brand, I should say. But this one I really enjoy. I think this is going to be really nice in spring. So I've only tried it in winter, but I will look forward to wearing this one in spring. So thank you, Laura. She also sent me one by a brand I've never tried before, and they're called Gallagher, or Gallagher. And this is called Wicked Good. Um, I hadn't even heard of this brand and uh, she said she didn't really get along with this one so she sent it to me. Uh, this is a gourmand, a full on gourmand. This has got a ton of cocoa powder in it but the best part about it is is that it has a lot of tonka and that makes me very very happy. I'm not really one for chocolate scents or full on gourmands but it doesn't stay chocolatey for too long. When it gets to the tonka I'm really happy so I'm glad I got to try this and it's made me a little bit intrigued by what else they make. I did hear another reviewer talk about one called Rosé All Day, so I'm intrigued. But yeah, Wicked Good by Gallagher. The last one she sent me, and then there's one left after this, was a Burberry fragrance called Burberry Brit Rhythm. I haven't actually tried this one yet, guys. I have not had time. <laughs> I could try it now, but I'm wearing Snowy Owl and I don't want it to interfere. Oh, this one's another clean one. It's kind of soapy. Let me see. I can feel like a, a white musk in this one. Maybe a bit of aldehydes. Is anyone familiar with this perfume? I'm not. But thank you, Laura, anyway. I will have to get to know this one and wear it a bit more. So the next one was sent to me by a German brand. This is going to be uh, the last one, actually. My camera just went off again. I'm having a bit of a nightmare today. It's by a German brand called Der Duft. They sent me their fragrances because I said I would do a spotlight. I was intrigued by them. Uh, some of their perfumes are made by Miguel Matos, which is exciting. They sent me this one, which is called Pride. And I've only worn this once, but I really, really like it. The dry down was very cool. It's, if anyone's tried Ella by Arquiste, if you're familiar with that white bottle, the dry down of this had some of that going on. It was kind of like a vintage Chypra, really, really nice. Uh, and I'm excited to try the other, other ones. It's a very minimalistic brand. They don't really tell you much about the inspiration. It's kind of up to you to interpret. There's one called Bubble. Um, there's one called 
the cinematic, I think. So I'll be doing a spotlight on these guys eventually. But for now, I think that is the last one. I should have had Telegramma by Imaginary Authors, which would have been my first Imaginary Authors. It's still on the way, but I've been waiting a month and the brand, the company I bought it from, which is not Imaginary Authors, are telling me that it's uh, Brexit. It's Brexit's fault that I haven't got it. So I don't think I'll be using that brand again or that company to buy perfumes, to be honest. So it would have been here, but it's not. Maybe it'll get here eventually. But anyway, guys, I hope you like this video. That is the end of my everything I added to my collection in 2020. Considering how crappy and crazy this year has been, you know, things like this keep me sane and keep me happy. So I hope you like this video and it maybe relaxed you a little bit. Now there's someone at the door. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys liked it. I'll speak to you guys soon. I've got a lot of exciting things coming up. Stay safe, please, and really enjoy your Christmas. Um, yeah, I'll speak to you guys soon, okay? Goodbye.